Welcome, welcome everyone to Chessman's Arcade, episode three, part three. We are just dragging on and on and on in episode three. We've gotten so much done. In the last part of this episode, we added um, you lose animation, game state management, and just everything that needs kind of put the finishing touches on version 0.1 of the game. So now it tracks us, you're the score of your player, kind of, and it, and it shows your score, kind of, and it, uh, well, let's just show, I'll just show you, I'll just show you. So I'm going to show you what we've got right now. This now this piece grows as is now working in episode three. It turns into a bishop, etc. Capture it, go to level two. So now there's two of them at once. And up here right now where it says 90, that's the score of the player. And then if this ever promotes to a king, then bam, it goes to you lose, game over, final score, and that's gone behind the board. So obviously there's a little bit left to be desired here. For example, um, having text that just shows up in the corner like that is not the best. I would rather have it text showing up where it belongs in a beautiful, beautiful fashion. So the objective of part three here is to build an animation engine for text. We're going to try to make text appear on the screen in a beautiful way that looks intentional, looks professional like a real game, as opposed to just a little note in the corner that says your final score was 60, game over, exclam, exclam, 111. So that's the goal for this part. You can watch the previous parts on YouTube. Uh, if you didn't see them, to see how we got to this point where the, ch the knight is able to move around by mouse. And by the way, you can also move around with the keyboard. Let me just demonstrate that, although you won't be able to see anything based on it. Where's my numlock? Numlock? Okay, I just lost. That's why it won't, I can't move. Okay, so you can actually move around. Apparently you can't. Can't get my numlock on. I'm having trouble with my unlock, and I just lost again. Get back here. Okay, so you can move around the keyboard. I'm having trouble demonstrating it, but you can use the QWE ASD ZXC keys to move the knight around the board. So if you want to really blow your mind, you can use the keyboard to move the mouse. But most newbie players are going to use the mouse because it's easier for your brain to wrap, wrap itself around. However, if you're a pro, you'll probably use the keyboard because you can input commands just a little bit faster than with the mouse, probably. Although a good player will be able to manage with either one. So I've just provided those two input methods. So now let's work on our text animation engine. Here we are at Visual Studio. Did we check everything in? Yes, so we're good to go. It's going to be added to the common folder, which means this is an engine that'll be usable in other games in the in the Chess Arcade, not just Uprising. <clears throat> you can't see this menu, but I don't care. Add new JavaScript file. Um, text. Is this going to be a global, like a text manager thing that everyone has one of? Um, text. Is it really going to be a global? Yeah, I'll call it manager. I'm doing this thing that's not really traditional, which is to call everything that's global manager. I've got a keyboard manager, a clock manager for the game speed, an asset manager for my sounds and, and images, and now a text manager for sh drawing text on the screen. But it's kind of not tr traditional to do things that way, but that's okay. Function text manager. Nope, that's not how we're going to write this. We're going to say yeah. Function text manager. Look at that. It has nothing in it. We're going to pass in the canvas so that it has a way to draw the text on the screen. Uh, this, uh, canvas, this canvas. So that's, that's going to happen. You're going to have a canvas. Now, where's my... my main page here uh, when I okay, the next thing I need to do actually is add this the, to my bundle whoops not my filters my bundle so I'm gonna add a text manager and it doesn't need to have any of this stuff so it can happen way up at the start next to the asset manager we can just have the text manager. so this is gonna reference the JavaScript file that I just created in my page now need in my globals file, which I did put it after globals, right? Before globals. Okay, globals this comes later. Because in my globals, I'm going to create a new text manager, which is here. It's a singleton. There's exactly one of them. So now I can access this thing from anywhere in the program because I just love um, globals. You can pronounce two L's. Ruffalino. Okay, it's good to know. <laughs> Uh, hi, Raffalino. Thanks for watching. Obviously, 
Uh, it's actually going to have. Um, so the manager is going to have multiple different texts that it can be displaying at the same time. So for example, if you capture a piece, it could be like plus 10 for 10 points, and that could be just above that piece. And at the same time, another player, because it could be a two-player game, could be capturing something else and plus 20 is coming out of his piece. So there's going to be a list of all the different texts uh, that are being managed by the text manager at any given time. Um, and then we're going to have um, So this is going to be called every frame, the text manager dot loop function. And so now we need to call that function every time the world loops. So the world is looping, world is looping, world is painting the main screen, and so I could put the text manager inside the world instead of having it be a global, but uh, as soon as I do that, then I'm going to think to myself it ought to be a global because this world is specific to Uprising and the text manager is going to work from anywhere. So, um, so I just want to make that change because as soon as I make it, I'm going to want to make it, change it back. Function. That should be function. can't believe I said that. Text manager dot loop. So now I'm calling loop every frame. The loop's going to do the updater stuff for this stuff. And then there's going to be text manager. So what is this going to do? So let's 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 add a function called add message, which is going to add a message to say. And there's going to be so much that you say when you say add this message, like what color it is, how long it's going to be on the screen, all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to just take a peek at my other game that I wrote a long time ago that I've called template because it's like a template for this game, um, and just see what it has in its globals because I know I have a text, a draw text thing here. I think I'll use that. I think that's the only useful thing I can pull out of here. Yeah. yeah. If you've got really quick eyes, you can read that whole file and, and think that's a pretty cool game. But um, let's just put that code down here. This is a draw text function, and it calls context.fillText. So that's going to occur in the draw. So paint is when it draws on the screen, and this paint thing is going to loop through all the messages, and it's going to draw them all. So there's two, two functions, loop and, and paint. And loop will call paint, because loops do that. They call paint. <laughs> uh, so it's going to paint itself, which it loops through all the messages, and each message looks like when you add a message, you could send all this stuff. So this is add message. Don't need to send the context because I already have the canvas here. How do you get the 2D context here? This is just for drawing on the screen. It's going to be simple. Uh, pass the message of the text, the x and the y, the color, the size, and the alignment. Now, as we see in this code, text equals text plus quote quote. Uh, that's a good way to convert to a string in JavaScript, so we'll do that cut line up there. Uh, font equals bold and size px. So this is, this is coming to the drawing. Bold plus M messages. So I, I realize this is kind of convoluted because I'm programming in the middle of this stuff. CDX.textAlign equals messages M. So this old code uh, would draw one message on the screen, and this is going to draw all of the messages in paint. So messages M.align and messages M.color. And then we're going to do a switch on the alignment, and if it's left, then I'm going to clear a rectangle. So this is clearing a space where the text is going to go. And I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm just going to wipe the entire thing. So see how this paint, the first thing the paint does, there's paint over here. Let's clear the entire canvas. I'm going to do that. Let's start 
canvas context dot clear x canvas dot width canvas dot height. So now I don't have to do the clear rect clear rect clear rect stuff because that's like clearing so that you don't draw text on top of itself. I don't need to do that because I'm going to clear the whole canvas. I think browsers are fast enough for that these days. When I first wrote some of these JavaScript games that I'm pulling uh, code from, browsers were a lot slower. Uh, so you couldn't just repaint everything, every frame, always while animating everything. It would get choppy. But I, I think I can do that now. Because that was like when Chrome 10 was out, now we're in Chrome 37. It's a big difference. I don't know what version of Chrome we're on, but it's going up quickly. So then ctx.filltext, this does the drawing at x and y. And where is x and y? This is messages.x. This is messages m. Now, the message is only going to appear for a certain amount of time, but for now, I'll just let it appear forever. So I'm adding a message, text, x, y, color, size, and an alignment. And I'm going to go that, and then I'm going to go stop new messages, dot push, and I'm going to create a new message. But messages can't do anything, so they don't need any functionality. So I don't need an actual type, like a class kind of a thing, even though JavaScript doesn't have such things. I can just um, I can just make a new object with all these parameters. This is um, a little weird. I mean, this kind of code, when you see it in a program, you think, shouldn't that be written a little bit differently? Because if you accidentally put x across from y, then you just have a really hard to find bug. And the answer is yes, it should cause x and cause y. It should be, but JavaScript doesn't have a lot of the tooling that strongly typed languages has by default have. So this is what you got to work with sometimes. So this is a loosely typed, uh, anonymously typed object that just has these properties. And look, lucky me, these are the, exactly the properties I'm going to be reading. Align, color, size, it's right there, position x, position y, and text, which is this. So they're actually, oh, this should be messages m text. So all of these properties are being used in the paint function. Text is used down there, pause x, pause y, here and here, and then color, here, Alignment and size. It's all it's all being used. Let's just switch those around. And it's all being saved here. And it's being drawn here. So this actually could work just the way it is now. All I have to do is call add message and it will add a message. Could this work? Let's see if it compiles, so to speak. Or it doesn't have any runtime errors, and it doesn't. Okay, I'm playing my game. This is fun. Um, now let's draw a message on the screen. And the way to do that then is to say, when you press the letter M, M used to be the secret code for adding new bad guys. Now M is the secret code for text manager dot add message. And now I, uh, 100 position Y is 100, position X is 100. Color is, uh, how do you do colors? <laughs> Let's look at my template project one more time. Let's look at a sample of calling that thing. What was it called? It was called um, draw text. So let's just search this project for draw text. Find lots of places where it's called. Oh, so you can do a string <laughs> uh, because it's actually an HTML thing. So we'll make it red. Red. You can also do RGB values if you want. A size can be 12. I think that's 12 px or 12, 12 point font. So let's make it 18 so it's easy to read. And the alignment can be centered. So that's centered on 100 by 100, whereas if I do left or right, so if this point is 100 by 100, then center will center it on that point, and then left and right will left or right align it to that location. So now I've saved everything. As soon as I run the game, I'm going to see that drawn on the screen. Of course, we don't. Why not? We haven't passed in the function, the canvas. In fact, this isn't going to work because 
this globals here, not that globals. I'm supposed to pass in a canvas here. That's how I need to create such a canvas. I'm gonna I'm gonna do all the text stuff on top of another main canvas because it'll always be over what's going on on the screen. So this is an important design decision actually. Is I've got a main canvas where the knights and the everything's moving around, you know, on the board. Instead of just drawing text on top of that, I could put it on a new canvas. But why would I do that? One reason is transparency. I could have the text get more transparent. There's really no reason to do that. I could just draw the text on top of everything else. I don't need a new canvas. I'm glad I thought that over. I could just use main canvas again. So let's find all the places that main canvas is referenced. Yeah, okay. So you can see what world does to get its canvas, to get a hold of the actual HTML canvas object, is it just uses jQuery to find it. So I'm actually gonna do the same thing here, which is pretty hacky in terms of dependencies, because whenever I include my text manager in a game, I'm gonna make sure I need, I need to have a main canvas for it to find, to draw on. And it needs to be named exactly that. But we'll just, we're just okay with that dependency, because this is one game out of one that we're making right now. And in the future, I'm very likely to have a main canvas that I will draw text on. So I'm okay with that dependency. Now let's see how it works. M. So M is still adding pieces, so there's a problem here. M shouldn't add pieces, because I totally changed what M does. M now does this. So let's build, maybe. Ah, uh, there's a there's a code. Oh, error. So M still adds pieces? That's very odd. Let's make that board smaller so we can make everything else bigger so we can see sources uprising. Why M is doing that? See, see, it's using an old version. Oh, I'm I'm not browsed to my local host. Okay, let's close that. Uh, that would be why I was running the online version and not the version that's being developed. Okay, now it's broken. Much much more reasonable. Cannot read property get context of undefined canvas equals main canvas. So it can't find the main canvas. jQuery exists. Main canvas um, exists. Main canvas sub zero exists. So does that all exist when you hit this breakpoint? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Chesbus makes this error on every episode, every part of every episode, which is to say this, forget his this dot on um, variable names, because you don't do that in every programming language. Okay, canvas is not defined. That should be this dot canvas with the height. Now, nothing is being drawn. That's because clearing the entire canvas is occurring after all the pieces are drawn, so I guess I won't do that. So I was thinking two canvases so I can clear and then draw, which is probably better. I'm really tempted, whoa, I'm gonna lose, capture that thing. I'm really tempted to have it be a separate canvas. There's no need, start over. This game's so hard. M, oops, M up here. So we got a runtime error, ctx is not defined, that's okay, that should not be ctx, it should be this.canvasContext. M. So now it's kind of working in the sense that it's not erroring. Messages is not defined because it should be this dot messages. Just with the same error again. Messages, this dot messages, this dot messages, this dot messages, this dot messages. And 
let's do it. I wonder why I didn't see that error before about the breakpoint. M. M. Hit that breakpoint. Hey, guys, do you see that? You see that up there? Let's take a look. <gasps> hi. It says hi. So now we know that 18 is tiny because that's 18 pixels. So let's do giant. 32. M. Hi. Um, let's do 128. M. Hi. Hi to you too. I'm so glad you're saying hi to me. This is great. Oh, I love it when you say hi. This seems like a feature. Press M and get a big red high on the screen. So that's actually not the final iteration of the text manager, but already it says hi. So I just love seeing this stuff under construction. You know, after the game is done, you go back and you're like, remember that version where you press M and you get a red high on the screen? Wasn't that great? I wish I could play that version again. Unfortunately, you never can. You'll need a time machine, except for right now when you could press M and get high on the screen. I'm getting high on the screen. Man, this screen is so dope. I'm getting high on the screen, man. Yeah, and I'm also playing Uprising, which is fun already. For the first time, by the way, in ever, Uprising is fun. Capture that rook. Whoa. No, I lose. Can you move onto something and move back so fast that you don't capture it? Yes, that would be a bug. So let's put that in my to-do list. Fix bug. Bug fix. Um, skips is capture. I don't want to fix that right now, but I do want to make a note of it. So let's put that at the top. If you move onto a piece and you're already moving off, then you don't pick it up. So that's pretty serious for unlucky people to have that happen to it. So now M, let's bump this up a bit. It's pretty cool already, but how can we improve it? One thing is it should have a shadow. Um, because red on the board is just kind of ugly. So let's um, let's draw the text again, twice more, in black. So how do you do this? This dot canvas context. That's such a long name. Is that what it's called in the world? It's called main CTX. Okay. Call it. Call it main CTX. Um, <laughs> uh, let's call it CTX. That's what everybody else is calling it. Yeah. Short for context. This dot context dot um, color, which is the fill style, equals black. Uh, this is the drop shadow. So now we're going to draw it twice more, once in position plus one, plus one. I don't know how this is going to look yet. Let's try plus one, plus one, and minus one, minus one. Uh, just see how that looks. So the shadow was drawn after the thing, so it smashed over the thing. So the red's not very visible. I know red's super ugly, but better like this still oh whoa 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 I'll draw the shadow first which means switch to black and draw the shadow and then do all the regular stuff which is this okay that was convoluted but now we're gonna see that so now it has a little drop shadow and we see just how ugly oh that is so ugly so is there any way to do uh, blur because that would help a lot let's do a google for fill text blur um, typographic effects in canvas text shadows that's kind of what i want Shadow color. Oh wow, it's got built-in shadows. Built-in shadows, mind blown. This is like working with the canvas of the future. I wonder if this is supported in all browsers. I hope so. 
uh, let's try this code right here. Um, we don't need this for now. Uh, ctext.shadowcolor equals, oh wow. Uh, color of the shadow, okay, so I'll just, that's great. Shadow offset x equals, okay, so the shadow should be um, a little bit below, just a little bit below. So offset x is zero and offset y is gonna be like six pixels because um, that puts it a little bit below. And then thanks for telling me those are integers, but I don't think I need to tell myself. And then the shadow blur, 10, that sounds great. So it's gonna like blur up above, behind, and so on. It'll just be, it'll just be great if it works. Don't need to refresh my home page. M. I said M. Now there's a bug. CTX is not defined. Whoa, Cheswiz made his bug again? That's amazing. Does that look good or what? And the more I press M, the more the shadow gets dense. See, a new layer of shadow. So that's actually way better. I'm so glad there's built-in shadows because I'm, I'm glaring at it here. Oh, that's really nice. Built-in shadows for the canvas. So I have to admit it's ugly, but I think that's because it's red. So, I mean, what if we make it brown? Which is as simple as putting the word brown in that section of the program. <laughs> that is not brown, guys. That's super, like, maroon. Um, shadow should maybe be to the right a little. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, so let's move it to the right a little. Three over. So that's pretty nice. Um, looks better to the right, I think. It's a little too pronounced, but the biggest problem is that brown is so ugly. <laughs> so super ugly. Add message. Hi. I'm going to change this into hello world so I can see more, more of it. World. Um, that's because I chose center. So instead of 100, 100, I'm going to go 5, 12, which should be the center of the chessboard. And it is. So that's really nice now. Now we can know that brown is not a good color <laughs> for a chessboard. So what would be? Let's, let's actually use my paint program. Now you guys cannot see the paint picker, so that's too bad for you. But I am selecting a brownish, a beautiful brown right now. And if you want to see it, it looks like that. Um, and I need to make it darker. Oh, that's a lovely, lovely brown. Oh, that's really nice. That might be a little dark, but let's try it. So the hex value of that is what I've just copied out. I don't know why you can't see the dialog in the uh, screen capture, but that's just life. So, M. so I've picked up this color. Uh, it's kind of muddy still. There's too much red in it. Let's take a little red out. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but I can spend a little time. So I've just taken some of the red out of that, and I think that's a better color. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty reasonable. Um, so now, now we can use it. No, now we need the manager to update it. So it's currently on the screen, but it just sits there forever. Uh, and that's bad, because the message needs to eventually disappear. So I think I'll pass it in age. Age is age. <laughs> um, so I'm kind of winging this. So if I like do something and then undo it, that's because I'm not exactly sure what I want. I want to make sure that the clock manager is loaded before the text manager because I'm going to use the clock. It is good because I'm going to use the clock to track the age. I need a comma here. Okay, great. So in update, I'm going to loop through all the messages. Paint that message. Oh, look how object oriented I am. I'm going to pass in the message. No, I'm not going to do that because of the way the array index wor index is, is working here. Otherwise, I'd have to index it to m inside there. You'd be like, where did m come from? I'm inside an array and I'm in a function. It's not right. So, what happened? It happened outside. Okay. Loop through all the messages and update their stuff. Is there a transparency? 
that I could use here. This web page seems pretty nice. Zebra effect sounds a little bit intense. Um, those are cool effects. I don't think I'm going to need them for my game. Yeah, you got some pretty nice effects here, dude. Person who does things, but let's do uh, transparent. Okay, uh, transparent is the word. Simply use RGBA or alpha transparency. Yeah. So what I want is it to have a fade out so the word it shows it shows immediately at full full opacity and then the transparency makes it fade over time over the course of its age. The problem is that I'm being passed a color like brown. How do I pull out that color? Into RGB values. No, I don't need a JavaScript program to do this. I mean, I don't need to parse int. That's way too complicated. Yeah, it's like parsing. It's like parsing the string. That's way too intense. I don't need to do that. So I'm going to think about how. So guys who are just tuning in, I'm working on a text manager. As you can see here in my to-do list, I am building a text animation engine. And right now it does show that. So what I'm working on right now is to make it fade out over time. And it looks like, it actually looks like it shows shadows on the pieces too. And that's pretty awesome. You can see it drop doing drop shadows on the pieces. And that's making the pieces look so wiggy, which is chess to speak for good. Look at that. Okay, the black piece looks a little weird, but I should definitely use drop shadows on these pieces. That's awesome. These chess pieces look so good with my weird drop shadow from the text. Maybe I'll just leave it like that. I won't. Um, I'll do a little drop shadow though. I mean, this, this shadow is too intense. So I'm going to take the shadow code. <laughs> okay, this is way off topic, but I'm totally going to do this right now because that looks so good. Uh, when I go to paint the enemy, that's in the, that's in the piece code totally inconsistent. This paint gets the context passed in. I'm going to set the shadowy stuff. And um, x is going to be 0, and y is going to be 4, blur is going to be 6, and it's going to be partially transparent, so this is actually going to be RGBA, and it's going to be almost black, so it's going to be like 20, 20, 20, and almost opaque as well, so like 100. So this is 20 red, 20 green, 20 blue, and 100 out of 255 opacity. Um, and when we do this, everything crashes because RGBA is not defined. You just told me to use RGBA. Uh, JavaScript, simply use RGBA. RGBA. Oh, has to be in quotes. <laughs> You're kidding. Oh, oh it's, it, oh, it's a message. I'm sending you a message, and the message is RGBA. That's the way it works, so we won't complain. Shadow color of undefined, so I've pasted in this this dot. This is the one and only time Chesswiz is going to put this dot in when he shouldn't, as opposed to leaving it off when he should. So I've added a little uh, shadow to the piece. As you can see, it looks really good on the players. It looks okay on the black pieces. But I actually think it's kind of nice. Um, but I don't want to be setting this every time I paint every piece. So let's jump out to the world. And set it 
just before you paint. So it's just set once instead of once per piece. And of course now, I have to reference the context differently. I should really make that more consistent. So now it's not setting one time per piece, so it's a little bit quicker. Because setting all that stuff is a little bit slow in some browsers. Oh, this is so fun. I want to play this instead of working on my engine. Oh, there's the bug. Capture all the things. No, get that rook. Get that one. Get that rook. No, I'm going to lose. Go get that rook. Yes, I'm still alive. Oh, this game is so fun. Get that queen. Yes. There's a rook over there. I want to get that. Grab that one, that one, that one. And yes, Chess was pretty good at this game. Grab that. Yeah, this rook, this rook, this rook, this rook, this rook, and that. Yes. Wow, Chess Whiz, is, I am so glad this game is fun, but I'm not getting much programming done because it is so fun. I'm about to lose. No, capture that. No, capture, ah, oh, I lost. I had to go down there and I had time for it. Just needed to go this way, this way, this way, this way, and then out like that and get that one. Oh, oh but if I go this way, I can pick up the pawn while I'm at it. Cool game, bro. And I got the shadows working, but, and that's not what I'm working on right now. I'm working on the, the words. Check in the chat. Is there a fade built into jQuery? Well, that's a cool idea, uh, D rocks, but I'm not using HTML elements at all. This, this thing right here is a canvas, and I'm using canvas.fill text to draw the text. So <clears throat> it's true I could do opacity with CSS, but these are not um, HTML elements that I'm putting on the screen. They're just, just drawing things. So unfortunately, I can't. This game is so fun. I could play it all day, but I'm trying to stream building it, not playing it. But after I'm finished streaming, building it, I'm just going to sit around all day in my pajamas playing Uprising, and it's not even finished. So the challenge is in the color. I want to put opacity, which that actually came out really good. I'm like, I'm happy with 20, 20, 20, 100. I'll just leave that right there, even though it's kind of magical, because all the pieces look really good now, thanks to that accidental feature. Um, But, oh, I didn't save that file. But the challenge is to add opacity to the, to the, you know what? I don't have to add opacity. I can just have the text like go up a little bit and then disappear. So, and then I can add opacity later. That's not really critical right now. So let's change life, age into lifespan, which is one word. And that's going to be how many ticks, how many frames it gets to be on the screen. And it's going to move up by one pixel per tick also. So what did I call the uh, birthday of an enemy? Created tick. And that should be called tick created, which is going to confuse me so much. <laughs> What's it called in the clock manager? It's called tick. So this is going to be the game frame in which it was created. And I'm going to go ahead to and change created tick into tick created. because I, I want it to be consistent with that. Consistency is important to me. Um, the, t the death of the message is going to occur in I don't really need to know when it was created, actually. Because I know the paint is going to be called once per frame. I know the loop is going to be called once per frame. So messages, this dot messages and dot lifespan minus minus. I mean, that's all I have to do. I don't have to keep track of the, any ticks at all. I'm just going to be like, da, da, dying, dying, dying. Oh, you're zero. And say, if. Of course, all the pro programmers do it like this, where the decrement is inside the if statement. 
I wonder if you can do this in JavaScript. I forget if you can. In C, this is the leap way to do loops. Um, so this decreases the lifespan. If it's less than or equal to zero, I should say is equal to zero, but the safe thing to do is check for negative so that it doesn't live forever. And I'm going to take it out of the loop. I already have some code that does that, which is splice. I'll just see how you call that, which is this. Um, this dot messages dot splice m and one that removes the one element right there which takes it out so if your lifespan is out you're dead and you're gone so now I pass in a lifespan which is going to be uh, 60 which is one 60 frames m's not defined yes it is no it's not 60 frames. M. See that? It lives for 60 frames, which is one second, and then it's gone. Yeah. Yeah, that's working. So uh, that actually is a message manager. Uh, it draws a message. And now I can use that. I can say text manager add message. I can add any message I want in any position I want with any color I want for a certain duration. After that duration is up, it's going to disappear. Uh, but let's actually make it move upward because that's what, that's what cool things do. So instead of putting it pause x, pause y, I'll do pause x minus lifespan. Oh, now I see my problem because <laughs> my lifespan is five. I'm like, well, where do I put this thing? Five, five units. Oh, yeah, I know what to do. I'm going to subtract. I'm going to subtract lifespan, which means no, I'm going to add lifespan, which means it's going to go up as lifespan goes down. And I do want it to go up because things that are good go up. But the position x, I'm going to actually add the lifespan into the position x when I start. So I'm going to say, oh, put this at this location. Okay, well I'm actually going to put it in that location plus the lifespan, which is um, 60 frames. So it's going 60 pixels below that. This isn't that great of a text manager engine. That's one of the problems, is that it comes in from the right. <laughs> so uh, this is making me laugh. Let's make it come up and down instead. Okay. So there's some definite as soon as you see this, you get you're like, oh, that's not quite right. M, M. One of the things I notice is that it's not centered. <laughs> it's way off to the right. We'll let that go for now. And it can fade as it goes up. But this is hacky. For example, it always moves one pixel up, always, and it's really hard to change that. So, because for example, I have to go times two here and times two here, and that will go up two pixels, <laughs> right? And that's just oh, and look, it's way off to the right. It's even more off to the right. Oh, maybe I should fix that right now. Oh, I should be adding this to pause y. <laughs> okay, that's why it wasn't centered. Wow. Okay. And I should be subtracting it, not adding it. That's why it's so low right now. See, now it goes two pixels. See how hacky that is? And I'm just hard coding that it's going to go exactly two pixels. It's kind of fun to do that. But this is the beauty of it, is the text manager can manage multiple messages. So I just bam, am, am a bunch, you know? That's the beauty of it. So what we're seeing here is that I'm really stalling because I'm not exactly sure what I want to do with this. So what I think I'll do actually is take a pause, um, take a break for good. I'll start continue next week in episode four. So.
the fact is I'm running out of steam because I'm not exactly sure how I want this. And instead of sitting here for half an hour saying, eh, how do I like this, eh, how do I like that, I'm just going to do some brainstorming off the video, off the stream, and just decide exactly how I want this to work so that when we come back in episode four, we can just build it. That way we don't spend a bunch of time just humming and hawing. So that'll save you guys time as well. So now I will publish it to... Um, I don't think we added any features except the text animation engine, but I'll go ahead and publish this anyway which it's exactly the same, except you can press M to get Hello World to show up on the screen. Um, the point, of course, is that it will say level up. In fact, you know what I should do? I should do that. It's not going to take long to say level up, right? I don't like times two. I kind of like times 1.5, and that just goes to show how arbitrary this is. I'm going to make these few small changes, which will kind of reap the low-hanging fruit of the system that I just added, which is when I go level plus plus, which is right here, I'm just going to add a message which says level up. <laughs> and it's just going to work like that, except it's only going to last for 30. Okay, so I'm just using my engine and it's not gonna it doesn't take much code now to do that. Bam, level up. See that? See how good that is? So level up, next level. So this is really easy to integrate this thing. I'm not really happy with all the fine-tuned settings of the of the manager, as you can see, the text manager, but you can see how easy it is to end to integrate into the game to level up and just tell the player that he's leveling up. So and then when you lose, I'm going to say a game over. And that's going to last twice as long, <laughs> which is going to make it appear off center because it has to move for, tw for twice as long. That's another problem. Really, if it wants to be on the screen for two seconds, it should sit. And then when it's almost gone, it should move up while it fades out. But I'll, I'll work on that another time. I'm getting kind of exhausted because I've been programming for four, one, two, three, for three hours straight. So level up. Now I'm going to lose. We're just going to see you lose or game over to appear. We're going to see that happen right now. Game over. Final score 170. And now you're frozen. So, so we've already integrated this. Very, very easy. I call that low-hanging fruit to just be like, look, oh, it was right there. So easy to integrate that and just get some features out of it, even though it's not quite finished. And then we'll and then we'll final score is just showing over there. And I'm not gonna work on showing the final score anywhere because we're not exactly sure how to do that. So I'll publish this so beautiful. I love that poopy brown color. Now it's at chesswiz.tv. If you're watching on YouTube, browse to chesswiz.tv, click Arcade, then you can click Play Now and play this awesome game. Post in the YouTube comments. Uh, if you're quick, you can post in the YouTube comments and say what or what score you're able to get on this game, but you really have to be quick because really soon I'm going to be adjusting the scoring and then it's going to be a complete obsolete score. So if you don't, if you're not quick, then your score is really going to be meaningless. So I hope you enjoyed this. Hope you learned a few things. I enjoyed making this game, not finished by any means, but you can definitely tell that it's really coming together and I like how it's come together quickly in this last episode. So once again, I think the plan is to do episode four next week at the same time, which is Thursday at 7 p.m. GMT, but I'll be sure to update the website. Um, so let me just show you this one thing also. The website has on it next episode, blah, 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 blah. So I should remove that because that's no longer true because that's this episode. Um, let's publish that. So if you keep an eye on the website, if you want to see the episode live and ask questions in the chat, you can just be sure to tune in at that time at twitch.tv slash chesswiz. And there it is. It's gone. So when I know when the next episode will be, I'll put it there. And it'll probably be next Thursday, but yeah, we'll find out. We'll find out. I'll know. I'll know pretty soon. So that's everything. That was a lot of fun. Hope you guys learned something from that. I hope you guys enjoy playing Uprising as it comes together. It's going to be really exciting when we've got two-player mode, when we've got network play, if that ever happens. That'll be fun, but already this game is so much more than it was at the beginning of this episode. So if you guys like this, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, subscribe to the Twitch channel, or follow it, or whatever you do. Just do your things. I'm not going to spam you anymore. This has been the Chess Arcade. Thanks for watching.